Why do you always make me so annoyed? I didn't mean to. I have had enough of being talked down by my daughter-in-law. My mother-in-law said with a disdainful look. There was no response to her satin words, but I remained it calm. I'm sick of being tied down to this house. I'll leave as you wish. My mother-in-law still didn't know what would happen to this house when I leave. My name is Beth, 36 years old. I've been married to my husband Alex for three years. We have a great relationship, but that was until two years ago. On that day, my life changed when I received a phone call from my husband in the middle of a cold winter day. I run an online shop and work from home, so I was at home working when my husband called me. Beth, it's an emergency. My dad. Your dad? What happened? Mom called me and said Dad collapsed. He's been transported by ambulance now. What? Your father was transported? I'm heading to the hospital. Can you come right away too? I took note of the hospital name and hurried to the designated hospital by taxi from the nearest station. But it was already too late. My father-in-law had already passed away when I arrived. I couldn't believe it. My husband and mother-in-law were already in the room, with my mother-in-law crying and covering her husband's body, while my husband gently stroked her shoulder. Then my mother-in-law turned to me. Beth, I need to talk to my son. Can you give us some time alone? Oh, sure. I understand. As instructed by my mother-in-law, I quietly left the room. A few minutes later, my husband came to me, and we went back home for the time being. On the way back, memories of my father-in-law flooded my mind, and tears began to well up. A few days later, we held the wake and funeral, and weren't able to say goodbye to my father-in-law. That night, after the funeral. My husband dropped a bombshell. Hey, I didn't tell you, but we are moving at the end of this month. What? Moving? What are you talking about all of a sudden? Sorry for the sudden news, but it's already decided. Took out a beer from the fridge and started it drinking without explaining anything to me. I couldn't understand it, and my thoughts momentarily stopped. What do you mean by moving? I haven't heard anything about it. At the end of this month, it's too sudden, isn't it? My husband hasn't mentioned anything important yet. I asked him about the thing that worries me the most. Hey, where are we moving to? Oh, to my parents' house. Huh? To your parents' house? Why? It's obvious, isn't it? It's because my mom will be all alone. Your mom? Does that have to do with the conversation you had in the hospital the other day? Oh yeah, mom asked me to live with her because she feels lonely living alone. You agreed just because she asked you to? Yeah, why not? I couldn't even sigh at my husband's easy acceptance. Even so. I couldn't forgive him for making the decision on his own, so I let out my feelings. Why didn't you consult with me even a bit about it? Moving all of a sudden is a troublesome. Oh, why would you be troubled? You're like a full-time housewife, aren't you? What are you talking about? You know that I work from home, right? But that's at home, right? There's no need to commute, and as long as you have internet access, you can work anywhere, right? It doesn't matter where we move. That's not the point. Anyway, it's already been decided. Mom is worried, so please start packing for the end of the month. My husband turned on the TV and deliberately turned up the volume to to drown to drown out my voice. 
angered by his behavior. I went to bed in silence. From the next day on, my husband began to say this every day. Make sure to pack everything in time. Put my things in clearly marked boxes. You're usually at home, so you have time, right? It might be easier than being a working office employee, but recently my work has been busy, and there have been a lot of inquiries due to increased sales. I have to handle everything by myself, so I inevitably run out of time. However, no matter how much I explain, my husband never understands. In the end. I had to sacrifice my sleep time and do both work and packing at the same time. As planned, we moved out at the end of the month, and our life in my in-laws' house began. It was much more difficult than I thought, both physically and mentally. Basically, all the housework was left to me. Even when I suggested dividing the work to my mother-in-law, she wouldn't accept it. Moreover, she joined in with her son and blamed me. Beth, since you are at home, you should be doing the household chores. That's right, Beth. You are, after all, a wife of this family. But I have work to do as well. You're just messing around on your computer, right? You have plenty of free time, so manage your time well. Oh. Is it that Beth takes too much time for one household chore? It's not like that. Then you should be able to do it. Make sure you don't cause any trouble for Mom. I will educate her to take care of the house as a wife should. Since that day, my available work hours have drastically decreased. If I don't finish the household chores. My mother-in-law will come to my room without even knocking and complain, and she won't even try to hide her bad mood, as she tells me. Beth, the laundry isn't finished yet, huh? But I finished hanging it all just now. It's not finished. The towel that I put in the washer earlier are still in the basket. You put them in after I started the washer. Right? I was planning to wash those tomorrow. Don't talk back to me. Just do as I say. My mother-in-law started to yell at me. Until I do as she says, her verbal abuse continues. I reluctantly interrupted my work and started the washer again as she ordered. Days like this continued for months. Even I. Who have a lot of patience was nearing my limit. One day, I confided in my husband about his mother. While we were lying in the bed before going to sleep, I brought it up casually. Hey, Alex, I have a favor to ask you. A favor? What is it? Could you tell your mom not to come into my room while I'm working? She comes in every day without knocking. And it's really distracting me from my work. Why are you telling me? Why don't you just tell mom directly? I've told her many times, but she doesn't listen to me at all. Then my husband let out a big sigh and responded weirdly, "Do you know why my mom goes to your room? What? Because you were doing something wrong. It's because you were not doing your share of the housework." Wait a minute! I'm not neglecting my housework. Mom told me you forgot to wash the towel the other day, right? And you don't cook the food the way Mom told you to do. Why are you so bad at this? My husband, who was supposed to be on my only ally, took his mother's side completely. Faced with this harsh reality, I couldn't say anything more. By consulting my husband, the situation with my mother-in-law became even more difficult. The next day, Alex's stress at work also increased, and he was always in bad mood at home. Then, one day, my husband came home from work later than usual. His face was red, 
and even from the distance, I could smell alcohol. Hey, Alex, how much did you drink? Shut up! I got fired from work, and I'm irritated. You got fired? What happened? Those guys fired me for such a small mistake. Damn it! He said it was just a small mistake, but it couldn't have been such a small mistake to get him fired. However, my husband didn't reflect on himself at all, and didn't even acknowledge his own mistakes. I tried to leave the living room, leaving my drinking husband behind. Hey, he stopped me and said, "What? From now on." We have to manage our finances with your income until I find my new job. What? Wait a minute. I've been contributing fifteen hundred dollars until now. Starting next month, it'll be three thousand dollars. I sell your online banking. You earn more than that, right? Did you check it without my permission? We're a married couple. It's not a problem, right? Anyway, make sure to put three thousand dollars in the household budget. If you don't like it, we'll get a divorce. He took out the divorce papers from his bag and threw them at me. Looking back, I should have decided to get divorced right away. At the time, I was just bewildered by the fact that my husband had been fired. In addition, at his command. I had to keep the news of his dismissal from his mother. To avoid suspicion from her, he pretended to wear a suit and went to work every morning. How long will this life continue? I can't even save any money like this. I had always wanted to start my own business, and even wanted to have a physical store. So, I had been saving my money, though it was not much. I hoped my husband would find a new job soon. I managed to endure this life somehow, but more than a half a year has passed since then, and he still hasn't found a new job. He started working part time a few months ago, but it doesn't support our household budget. Despite this situation, my mother-in-law still hurls insults at me due to the stress of my husband being fired. I ended up arguing with her one day. If you have so many complaints, why don't you do everything yourself? What, Beth? Why are you acting that way toward your mother-in-law? I am busy with work too. I do the good amount of housework. I can't handle any more than that. Without thinking, I shouted and then snapped out of it. But it seemed. I had stepped on a landmine already. My mother-in-law was livid. Why do you always make me so angry? I didn't mean to. I've had enough of being bossed around by my daughter-in-law. Just disappear. That's when my anger turned into resignation. Ah, it's pointless to deal with them anymore. I realized it in an instant. I understand. After saying that, I began packing my things. My mother-in-law watched me satisfied the whole time. Since a nearby business hotel was available, I stayed there for a few days and submitted a divorce application with the court. That's how I was finally freed from the curse of those two. After staying at the hotel. I rented an apartment near the land where I want to eventually open a store. It was about three weeks after leaving my in-laws' home when one day my ex-husband Alex called me out of frustration. He immediately started yelling at me. Enough already! You are such a burden. How long do you think you can keep wandering around like this? What's the matter all of a sudden? Where are you now? It's none of your business. I don't have to tell you where I am. What? Don't mess with me. Even if you are useless, you are still my wife. So hurry up and come back instead of fooling around. 
It seemed like he didn't realize that I had already filed for divorce. I tried desperately to hold back the laughter, welling up inside me, and calmly replied, Excuse me? I'm already divorced. So I'm single, you know? Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> If you don't believe me, go to the government office to confirm it. My divorce application was properly accepted. Come on, you're joking, right? Then we heard my mother in law's voice as she listened in on our conversation. Beth, come back soon. If you do, I'll forgive you now. What? Forgive me, you say? Yes, I'll forgive everything. Even when you left on your own and made impolite remarks. So just come back quickly. What are you talking about? I have no regrets. In fact, I feel relieved that I finally got away from the bullying mother in law and jobless husband. Jobless husband? Are you talking about Alex? He goes to work every day. No, he has not. He was hiding the fact that he got fired from you. You were the only one who didn't know about that. After he became unemployed, I supported your family for more than half a year. Th then, please come back now. Aren't you worried about me? What? I already told you that I don't want to have anything to do with you, scambags. Beth, please calm down and let's talk things out. There's nothing left to talk about. Even if we talked, nothing would be resolved. I am tired of being manipulated by you, too. I regret not doing this sooner, you know. Well, then, goodbye. Wait, Beth, please help me. Without listening to the end, I threw my smartphone onto the bed and did a fist bump. Yes. It was finally all over. Now I can move forward without any regrets. As expected, they apparently met a terrible end later on. My mother in law blamed Alex for being fired, and Alex blamed my mother in law for giving him the reason to kick me out. A fight between the two of them began. In the end, Alex left home. And found a job at a low paying factory where he could live in. My mother in law was forced to live a lonely life on her pension, and their lives completely changed. As for me, I'm preparing to open a physical store for my handmade shop. When things settle down, I will go see my parents at home. Don't worry, I'm definitely happy now. I won't take this happiness for granted. And will focus on the present moment. That's what I decided in my heart.